few of those coyotes? Yeah. They've been here for generations. They say in the 1800s, they ate a Newfoundland dog. They say in the 1930s, they ate a child. And now, today, they're after mom's chickens. They sure downgraded. <laughs> oh, you think it's funny? When they eat mom's chickens, you won't think it's funny. They'll eat Michael too, hopefully. Welcome to Free Range Children, a show about our family learning how to become good backyard chicken keepers. We've got four of them, Edith, Gertie, Mabel, and Penelope. So join us, me, Michelle, Chris, Alex, Joseph, and Michael, as we figure out how to keep our girls safe. So I was walking outside to shoot some hoops today, and then I noticed this license plate. I think that a predator did because there's uh, teeth marks, and if a predator did this to a license plate, imagine what it would do to a chicken. And I'm pretty sure it was a coyote. What I think we should do is, if we want to find out what's really going on here, let's put up a trail camera with night vision, and then we can see what we have, and then figure out how we deal with it. You're so smart. Oh, Be thanks. so smart. Thanks, stop, stop. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> okay, that's pretty scary. We need to talk to some experts to make sure that we are doing what we should. When you're making your chicken coop, don't use chicken wire. That would be my number one to anyone new to chickens. Don't use chicken wire. Chicken wire keeps the chickens in. It does not keep anything out. It is very flimsy and raccoons will rip through it. Coyotes will rip through it. Dogs will rip through it. So use welded wire, less than a half inch. In the chicken protecting industry, we like to say that that is not safe. <laughs> A neighbor's dog looks at that and thinks, buffet, all you can eat. Aha! This is just a free range uh, fence so the dogs can't get th through. It's, we use it when we're here at home, and yeah, we're putting in the zip ties so the dogs can't get through. Give all the fences a nice little pull wherever you see the staples, make These sure that- These need to be tightened, uh, the hinges on the door, the screws on the door. Okay, that's a great, so we'll grab a screwdriver and do that for sure. You know, raccoons, they say, can um, open anything that a three-year-old can. So whenever you set up a, a latch or a locking mechanism, on, you're supposed to make sure that there's at least two Two, uh, two things to trick the raccoon. I put three locks on because your mom is really paranoid and curious too much about her chickens. Crazy chicken lady. She's a crazy chicken lady. Now, what you need is, what we'll bring a ladder in, or somebody can climb the tree and then look at the roof and see if anything's... So Michael, take a look up and you see if, if anybody's been trying to pull up the, the ridge vent at the top. Um, looking up here, don't see much. And then Alex, with your big tall arms, you can push this up and see if there's any, if, if anything, if there's any spots where they can crawl in. You can tap the soffits, that's the under part, to see if anything's come loose, anything that a raccoon can find its way in. And remember, raccoons are really, really strong for their size. I just found a massive spot a raccoon could get in. Door. The door, very good, very good. I think it's time to talk to our fellow chicken keeper friends, Brody and Victoria. When I built the coop, I did put uh, some of this wiring actually beneath the run, but that's been added underneath just in the case of any raccoons try and dig underneath. They should meet some resistance from the metal wiring there. Which we did see a huge one the other day. So. Yeah, we saw a big raccoon the other day, so we've been keeping an eye out for that. 
But we also want to keep out like mice and other kinds of rodents, snakes, that kind of stuff. So mint is one of the herbs that's very good for that. So I'm going to put all along the exterior here and mint to keep those critters out. And rabbits. I think rabbits don't like mint either. Um, so I was just looking under here because there used to be a skunk that lived down here and um, I don't think we really have to worry about this skunk. Looks like Wilma chased it away. I don't smell any skunk, so seems like our chickens are safe, safe from that skunk. Talk about crime scene investigations for your chickens. Here's the situation. If you come out and you find a chicken in the coop that is absolutely just little bits left of it, chances are a possum got into your into your coop and just it will eat it right on the spot. Whereas a, whereas a fox or a coyote will grab it and take off, look for a, a safe spot to consume the chicken. Owls, and I heard about eagles and other birds of prey too, because they can't carry the whole chicken back to the nest to feel, feed their young, they will, um, they'll just take the chicken's head straight off and then take the chicken's head back, which is kind of sick. Moms training babies, predators of any kind are really bad because they will go out and kill uh, bird after bird after bird after bird and not eat it. I don't mind losing a bird. I lose the odd bird to a hawk and I'm okay with that because that's what hawks do. The rest of the time they're eating the mice and the rats that, and the rabbits so that's okay. Um, but raccoons when they're training their babies, the same as coyotes training babies to hunt, they will come in and they will wipe everything out because they're letting the babies kill and practice and kill and practice and kill. With air predators, They'll be coming down and the chickens need a spot to hide and they might not be able to get into the coop really quickly. So we're setting up boards like this just here and there. Right like in between these two so they can go right under here. As well as over here with this board. And then this is just if they want to climb up. The reason we built our coop around this tree is because it and occasionally the child up in it provide natural protection against aerial predators such as eels and hawks, as the chickens, when standing around here, are non-visible from the sky. Our chickens are very good at going home at night. They know, they know the drill, and one wasn't in there. So our boys were part of the beginning of searching, calling, and then it was the next day that the chicken was found and I was worried about my boys seeing that. And that was a huge learning process too because you know I brought her over, we dug her a little grave and you know we said thanks for the eggs and you know that was an experience in and of itself right? Yeah, it's part of it's life. this, it's part of owning chickens and you do have to accept that Mother Nature is always going to win, and this does happen no matter what you do. Well, we've learned, we used to let them free range all over the place, but it was, again, when we lost a chicken to a predator, that's when we decided, okay, we'll keep them out, let them free range when we're home, but when we leave, we put them back in. Yeah. Mom, come on, let's go. Okay, I'm coming. All right, we're going out for dinner. You girls be good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm coming. Come here, Wilma. Easily. It'll be good, right? Bye, Jack. Absolutely. We'll yeah, be back are. before dark. The, the door's open, guys. I can't believe we left the door open. Go, 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 go. Shut, you guys, shut the front door. Shut the front door. Go, go, go. Here come, girls. One, two, three, four. Look at you good girls. Going right up where you're supposed to. They're all here, they're safe. Biggest lesson learned is that as they're humans, we are the chicken's biggest protectors. 
And if you leave the door open, Mother Nature right. will win. That's all they got for you. They don't have anything else. Oh! oh. See that worm come right out of the ground? She picked it right out of the ground? Wow, I never even, she just like tugged that whole poor worm. Speaking of predators, you guys are your own predators. Uh -huh.